Hi, adventure fans. It's time I got around to do another instructional video here. This time I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Anshare Step Through Commuting Electric Bike. Uh, to give you a little bit of a background, before about six months ago, I had never ridden one of these. And, um, you know, I had the opportunity to go on a bike ride with a friend of mine who had one. And within literally uh, 30 seconds of riding that bike, I was actively planning on ways that I could go about restructuring my funds in order to be able to buy one. Now, um, about a year ago, also as a little bit of more of a background, I lost 60 pounds. And one of the ways I was able to do that was I walk a lot. The problem is I have to be at work at 4.15 in the morning. And uh, in order to do that and walk the 1.7 miles to my job, I have to leave really, really, really early. And getting a bike would certainly help with that. And an e-bike potentially would help it even more than that. So I did all my research, just so you know. And uh, I knew I could only afford a fairly inexpensive e-bike, which, well, only about 18 months ago were selling for an awful lot less than they are today. And this bike in particular went up by about 200 bucks within a couple of months after my purchase. So, and by the way, I did purchase my own bike too by the way a couple of things to point out the bike is as most do comes uh mostly pre-assembled the front steering wheel or i mean the handlebars uh the front uh wheel and uh, the seat and the rack were not attached but uh, i was able to uh without an awful lot of extra time put this together in about 40 minutes and i am by no stretch a genius when it comes to mechanical uh, anything now, I thought briefly about doing an instructional video regarding the assembly, but honestly, folks, it would take, I don't know, far longer than I really wanted to put into it. And let's be honest, a bunch of those videos already exist and probably do it way better than I could. About the only difference between the assembly video that I viewed ahead of time and my bike was that they had updated the front forks to be quick release instead of the usual. So other than that, it's honestly pretty straightforward, actually. I will say this regarding the assembly. Uh, when you're finished, do yourself a really good favor and check each and every single nut and bolt to give yourself peace of mind that everything is tight and secure. Further, check your brakes to make sure that they are working properly as well. Now you may notice, I think it's, is it this side or is it the other side where, yeah, this right here, this has come off entirely. I have no idea where it went. And I already made sure that it was pretty tight ahead of time. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, after owning my e-bike for several months, I have a few things that I would like to uh, um, pass along that I think it might be a little important to anyone considering buying this particular model of e-bike. First, since this is a step-through bicycle, as you can see right there, um, uh, let's see, those who may have joint issues or maybe you're older and you want something easier to get onto and ride, a step-through bike is going to definitely be a, a, a great way to go. And if that isn't an issue for you, I th still think the step-through bikes are great. And they look a lot better in person than they do in photos and video that I've seen. They're also easier to get on and off without hesitation. So if this is possibly something you're considering, do yourself a favor and try to test ride the exact bike you want to buy ahead of time that you're interested in first, or at least something that's similar. So you'll have a better idea of exactly how it will run and how it's going to feel for you. Next, let's talk about that little motor right there, okay? <sighs> I got the weakest motor I believe that you can find on an e-bike. I suppose there may be one smaller, but uh, 250 watts is the smallest that I've uh, personally seen. And there is a really good reason for this. They really are genuinely weak. Now, don't get me wrong. They're still a blast to ride. And as far as Ann Shear claiming the top speed of this bike being 20 miles an hour, oh, heavens no. I uh, think it has a top speed of 20 miles an hour in theory, perhaps, or maybe going downhill, but on a level surface, I highly doubt that. Now, those who weigh less will definitely have an advantage here, of course, but um, I don't think that's going to translate into an awful lot more power because that just simply is not going to happen. This is a rear hub brushless motor, which does not supply a great deal of get up and go. Going up hills is also another area that this motor just will not help you with. Now, if you don't go down uh, to the lower gears, going uphill is going to be just as hard as pedaling up a hill on a regular bicycle uh, without an engine at all. On full throttle and on the lowest gear this has, which is only six gears in total, I might add, 
uh, you won't feel any assist from that motor whatsoever. At least I certainly didn't. One of the things I would do differently if I knew what uh, I know now in regards to buying my very first e-bike is I would get a 500 watt motor at the bare minimum and uh, one with more gears in order to help you with pedal assist when you are on a flat surface and you want to go as fast as you possibly can. So you can take that for what it's worth, but that's my personal opinion. I don't have a lot of, a lot of hills uh, to climb. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, there's lots of hills around here. But if you don't have an awful lot of hills to climb and you don't really need to go more than the 14 miles an hour that this bike can muster up, then the end shear is capable of giving you pretty much all you need, really. The step through electric commuting bicycle by end shear is really a pretty great buy. Uh, it has three levels of pedal assist, and you can see the controller right there. It seems uh, most e-bikes these days come with about five levels of uh, pedal assist, sometimes even more than that. On assist number one, it kind of is like riding a regular bicycle. Yeah, it is helping, but keep in mind because this is an e-bike, it weighs more than your average two-wheeler, and therefore without that assist going, uh, boy, can you feel it. Look at that battery. That battery weighs about 15 pounds, and I'm not joking. Now, it does give a little extra boost than that riding a regular bike in pedal assist number one, but uh, not a whole lot, and yes, you can feel it. The assist kicks in around a full revolution of the uh, pedals. On pedal assist two, it really kicks in though. You don't even have to put much effort into pedaling at that point. Just keep the pedals rotating and uh, the motor's gonna keep you moving around, oh, 10, maybe 11 miles per hour. Up to uh, assist level three, you're gonna have difficulty keeping up with the pedals at that point, which is why I would opt for a bike with more gears if possible in order to help you provide even more to the motor uh, for assist on your part if you're trying to really get moving. The rack on the back is really convenient. I mean, I have found uses for this. I, I've even transported really large take and bake pizzas on this to be completely honest with you. And uh, just under that is the battery, and it's not a very thick battery. In fact, it's one of the chief reasons why I chose this particular e-bike uh, in, uh, in general. The battery is thin, it's long, and uh, not to mention heavy, and it's somewhat disguised by the rack on the back of the bike. And I, I found a lot of people didn't even know that I had an e-bike to begin with. Now, it didn't take long for that novelty to wear off, and I don't really care where the battery placement is anymore. Well, actually that's not true. I'd prefer one that to be uh, uh, more between the front and back wheels, if I'm being honest, to better distribute uh, the weight. Like a lot of them have them right in this area right here, and uh, or, or right behind the seat somewhere down here. That's actually a great uh, place to put those. Okay, so, um, you know, I, I, I guess the, because of the weight back here with the rack, you, and the motor, this back tire assumes an awful lot of extra duty, okay? And uh, that's gonna take its toll on this tire, and uh, it's gonna take a toll really quickly, especially with the cheap tires that Anshir puts on this bike. Now, this is the original front tire, and it's still doing pretty good, to be completely honest with you. But there's a whole lot less weight on it. I've, uh, I've already replaced the back tire with one that had much better tread, and it's already wearing pretty heavily on the center. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, Ansher gave us some uh, front forks with suspension, which is a nice bonus, but they're absolutely worthless. Unfortunately, you can't adjust them at all to be more firm or turn it off entirely. So they're choppy and essentially they do nothing to really cushion your ride at all. I mean, I can't emphasize this enough. One of the things that I did after getting my bike was I got a memory foam gel top for my seat, which does make a huge difference. And I recommend you do that because the cheap seat they put on here is terrible. And my uh, tailbone was hurting me within a couple of days after buying my bike. And it still hurts months later, even after I got this gel top. So. Uh, that's just something to think about, and I just thought it was important enough to tell you about. So after all this time, am I still happy with my Anshir bike? Well, yes. I honestly feel like I got my money's worth out of it for, um, you know, what it does and knowing what I should expect from my e-bike. I am really pretty satisfied uh, as I was the day that I assembled it, to be completely honest with you. But keep in mind, I did a lot of research before buying mine. 
And even doing that didn't prepare me for the few things that I brought up here in my review today. Things that I wish I had known before I bought mine. Now I'm hoping what I've been able to share with you will help you in making your own decision before you know, dropping at the very least five or 600 bucks or over a thousand dollars, depending upon which type of bike you want to buy. I'm now uh, and forevermore a true convert to e-biking and that's not gonna change anytime soon. They truly are an absolutely fantastic invention and man, oh man, they will provide you with an awful lot of entertainment uh, for the life of the bicycle, and I can't recommend them enough. I really appreciate that you watched our video here, and a sub to my little channel would do an awful lot of good for me. But either way, I hope you've been able to uh, understand and figure out a few things and uh, answer a few questions you may have. Uh, until the next video, happy adventuring!